How many of you out there sometimes feel lonely? Yes, me too. Thank you for the honesty, thank you. So what happened? One night, I was lonely, and I wanted to find out who else out there in the world is lonely? So what I did, hashtag lonely. And what I found out was that there's 6.8 million posts attributed to that hashtag. So, now that you guys know this, who out there is interested, want to, or are thinking of becoming an entrepreneur? Raise your hand. Great. Here's the good news. It's completely doable. Here's the bad news. Your life will change. I promise you this. Many people think entrepreneurship looks something like this. You ride around in a private jet, you wake up at 11, read the paper, have a cup of coffee, and maybe take a few phone calls, and then magically, the checks just roll into the bank account, right? I'm gonna tell you right now, as entrepreneurs, we would so love this lifestyle. But in reality, entrepreneurship is not that glamorous. I'm gonna tell you guys a story. There was a point in my life where I had lost everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. I was on my third failed business. I had lost friends. I lost my savings account. On top of that, I nearly lost my life because I got into the wrong relationship. That same month, my landlord was suing me for back rent. His timing couldn't have been worse. The reason why I tell you this story is because that was the most socially isolated moment in my life. It was very lonely. As entrepreneurs, we go through social isolation. It's very real. And the reason for this is that we hustle hard. We work 12 to 18 hour days, sometimes without human connection. And because of this, self-care becomes secondary. You're gonna find yourself scheduling reminders to eat, to drink, take a break, maybe go to the bathroom. And then when your mobile device pings you, what's gonna happen? You're gonna successfully ignore every single notification. Free Wi-Fi will be your biggest obsession. Anywhere you go, you're gonna ask people, hey, is there free Wi-Fi here? What's the password? Money will always be a challenge as an entrepreneur. My name is Connie Chi. I'm a serial entrepreneur with three failed businesses under my belt. I'm currently working on my fifth one. And I'm gonna tell you right now that entrepreneurship is not that easy. Matter of fact, it's a very lonely lifestyle. If you're wondering how lonely looks like, first of all, you're gonna to get tons of emails from strangers. They're gonna want you, and you just wanna pull your hair out. So what do they want from you? They want your money, they want your time, they want your opinion, they want a job, and sometimes they want you as a business partner. They just keep wanting you, but with all these strangers wanting you, it's still somehow lonely. If you think about it, how long am I gonna sit by myself to clear out 27,000 emails in my inbox from a stranger? Not only that, these strangers, they want me for what I stand for, a cash register. They don't want me for who I am. They don't even know me. So now, the question becomes, how do we get past loneliness then? Well, for me, this lovely little creature has become the one person, and I call him a person because we are totally BFFs. We spend so much time together, we live together, we share workspace together, we share meals together, and you know, the best part is, he listens to me when I complain. He doesn't interrupt. And here's the kicker. When I'm on the floor crying, he looks at me with the most adoring eyes, as if I'm the world's most beautiful woman. But yet, I look like that. <laughs> as an entrepreneur, yes, you're gonna find yourself crying a lot, I promise you. Many times I've been on the floor 
crying by myself, wondering, did I make the right life decisions? Am I cut out to be an entrepreneur? Because it feels like none of this is working. And with all these emails I'm getting, am I going to die alone in my emails? Because if that's the case, take me out now. And here's the toughest question. If I disappear from the world, would anyone even notice? On top of that, you're going to start to question your self-worth. Am I good enough? And the reason for this is because your life and your identity is so connected with your career that when your business trajectory dips, you take it personally. And as an entrepreneur, you're probably going to have an extreme personality. So it means that when you experience the wins, that adrenaline rush is so addictive that you end up chasing it. You know what else is lonely? Your non-existent love life. As an entrepreneur, this is something that we struggle with. And it got me curious because I wanted to know, is, is dating even worth the investment? So I turned dating into this mathematical equation. Let's all assume we are consultants and we charge about $200 an hour to consult. Now, we're also going to go on about three dates a week, which is a lot for an entrepreneur. And each date, about five hours a day, which includes your travel time. Now, because we're entrepreneurs and we don't give up easily, right? We're going to do this for a month. You lose $12,000. Now, that doesn't even account for the time that you've spent scoping out your prospective date's social media account. Who are they following? Who follows them? What kind of comments they're writing? How many women? How many men? Now let's say we do this for a year. You lose $144,000. On top of that, there is no guarantee, no contract that says you're going to recoup these losses or end up in a happy relationship. Now, this $144,000 loss is from a woman's perspective. Guys, I'm sorry to tell you, but your number is going to be much higher because you guys are going to be driving us ladies around and you're going to spend a little bit more time on the dates. Which leads me to my next point. Paying your bills in cash flow will always be a challenge. And the reason for this is because we as entrepreneurs, we live in a state of uncertainty. We're always wondering, where will my next check come from? Am I going to be able to pay my employees this month? And how do I get new clients? And in those moments, all the practices that you've learned about the law of attraction goes out the window because things just got real. I'm going to paint you a story. You're down to your last $10 in your savings account. You owe money to every single credit card you own. The mortgage is due next week. And the cereal box is down to its last scoop with one dry fruit that you need to share with your dog. Another emotion we go through, and this is a big challenge for us, is guilt. Yes, as entrepreneurs, we experience this because we know that we voluntarily put ourselves through this kind of emotional roller coaster. So when we feel bad, we actually are, we feel guilty. We don't want to share it with people because we don't want to be judged. On top of that, we don't want to let down our loved ones or be called the lazy bum in the family. As leaders leading a team and entrepreneurs, we all feel like we have to put on this invisible armor that makes it seem like we have it all figured out. But in reality, I'm going to let you guys in on a secret. What's really happening is this. We're thinking, oh my god, I have no clue what's happening, but I'm going to pretend like I do. This happens to a lot of entrepreneurs. You, if you speak to entrepreneurs and you ask them, when was the last time they took a guilt-free vacation? A lot of them can't answer that question. Yes, we feel guilty when we're not working. Then comes this point in your life where you realize you need to downsize life. 
because you can't even afford yourself. So what do you do? You sell everything that you own and you move back in with your parents because it's free rent. <laughs> then comes this moment every entrepreneur is familiar with. You realize you need to start hiring a team to help you build your dreams. But how are you going to do that when you don't have enough cash flow? Here's the solution. You're going to hire the same family members you moved in with for free labor. Or you're going to barter your services with other entrepreneurs. Now all this got me wondering, since when did it become okay for entrepreneurs to put ourselves last when we're the first ones out there taking a risk? When we're the first ones creating something from nothing? And when did the conversation become, you're guilty for putting yourself first? And why is it that we as entrepreneurs don't celebrate our unsuccesses as much as we celebrate our successes? For what it's worth, we're a really intelligent group of people, and I'm biased because I'm part of the entrepreneur group, right? But we experience something called imposter syndrome. How many of you have heard of this imposter syndrome? Okay. So it's where you feel like you're pretending to be something or someone that you're not. And because we go through this internal conflict, we don't really share this a lot. And it leads to a lot of entrepreneurs turning to substance abuse. Here's some real stats. Entrepreneurs and founders were two times more likely to suffer from depression, six times more likely to suffer from ADHD, ten times more likely to suffer from bipolar disease, and two times more likely to have suicidal thoughts. Here's another interesting fact. 70% of entrepreneurs, 70% of businesses disappear and never come back. So the question becomes this. Why is it that entrepreneurs still continue to do what we do if we know the risks? Answer, we're built differently. We crave this autonomy. We don't want to be in a cubicle. But most importantly, we want to passionately impact the world in ways that's only imaginable. So then, how do we care for our minds as entrepreneurs? Along my journey and unsuccesses, I've learned a few secrets. Now, if you find that it fits, you're more than welcome to use it. If not, it's okay too. So first, drop the ego. As entrepreneurs, you have to be willing to do the things that others aren't willing to do. And it's in this doing that you need to find the joy of it. Because let's keep it real. Entrepreneurship, it's not sexy. It's raw, it's gritty, and here's the worst part. You will get in your own way. So this is why you have to always remember that you're going to be perfectly imperfect. So many times entrepreneurs, when they start, they want to make sure that they're saying the right things, wearing the right clothes, or even posting the perfectly edited social media photo. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not a sustainable lifestyle. Along this journey, you need to always remember that you have to celebrate your wins. No matter how big or small the accomplishment is, be the first one to celebrate you. Because everyone else is busy in life. They have their own personal struggles. So in those moments when no one is clapping for you, learn to clap the loudest for yourself. Because it will get you through those days that you're on the floor crying. And I implore you to be forever curious as an entrepreneur. Because curiosity is where inspiration is born. This is the same place where we as leaders will continue to lead and change the world. But give yourself permission to reframe reality. If someone says no to you or you got rejected, that's great because it just means life is making room for the best opportunities to come into your world. When it comes to unsuccesses, we have two choices. We can look at it as if, darn, I'm a failure, or as an opportunity for you to level up for tomorrow. This is why entrepreneurs always need to have squad goals. Get a squad. And I don't mean on social media. I mean in real life. Get humans to connect with you. Because 
when you have other people who connect with you, you have a group that not only understands you, supports you, but these are going to be other entrepreneurs that challenge you to think differently, lead differently, and live differently. And lastly, you don't always have to be your own superhero. You're going to have days that you're not at your optimal best. You're crying. And it's okay. And if you need help, ask. It doesn't mean you're needy. It just means that you are human. I remember when I was writing my first book, I had a moment. And I thought to myself, how am I supposed to write a book, run a business, still have time for self-care, and do the day-to-day -day operations? And that's when a dear friend of mine told me, Connie, you don't always have to be superwoman and do every single thing at every given moment. And in my mind, what I thought was this, easy for you to say. Now, before I leave you, I want to say this. In this lifetime, we're fortunate enough to have the power of imagination. So if you have a dream that's worth chasing, keep that dream alive. And I want to invite all of you, let's collectively be out of our minds and celebrate our unsuccesses as much as we celebrate our successes together, because minds matter. Thank you.